Hello everybody, my name is Alpha, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Nephilim, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. It must be the ones she prepared that has all the poems we were performing. At the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think ain't that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only say it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Nephilim. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. How do you know about that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? No, not on her life. Not on your life. And how I basically turned down her confession. That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Micah's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Also note that the frickin' music has not picked up again yet. And I know there isn't something wrong with the audio in the game because the frickin' title music was playing. Fact, settings, music volume. See? It's perfect. It's fine. And you could, you could hear the sound of the ding, 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 ding. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh, yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so, too. <sighs> I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different from the ones she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. What is this? Read the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Nephilim? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else I always written. But more than that, I... I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that at, that after me. I quicken my pace. 
What was I thinking? Should try a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since so she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case. It just feels right. That's how Sayori's room. I knock on the door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. Just no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. The fuck? The hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What the fuck is this music? What did I do wrong? I can think of a few things I did wrong. Turning down her confession. That has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her w what I know she wanted out of our relationship. That I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 What the fuck? Whoa, what the fuck? Wait! an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is... Sorry, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, and starting around high... But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crossword. 
Spock let Sayori catch up to me. What the fuck? walk to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I feel like just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and the anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's before, over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Nephilim? Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. Jesus Christ. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica Mouse. It's like Sayori was completely erased. It's like she never existed. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely makes. It feels a little. What did you come in here for? What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. You know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of... dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. It's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in Clever. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member is a member, right? Did Ma Annika say she? Hmm. Hey, Nephilim. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. If only you knew. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Uh, like, no thank you, have a nice day. By the way, can I have my best friend back? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Nephilim, you know that? Uh, it's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her... Nope. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs. A section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! And I brought a guest with me. No! A, 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 a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Okay, Natsuki didn't freak out. 
Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Nephila. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls! It's gonna be less and less filled as I go on. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? Uh, no, I'm not. not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognize. Is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first seed. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Of course, she'd be the vice president. It, it's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Nephilim in the classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but it just, I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Nephilim? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Yeah. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. Mm. Yeah. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us. <laughs> Before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I, I meant that... You know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Although right now I've got milk. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Nephilim, what kind of thing types of things do you like to read? You know, I ar I actually already told you everything that I like to read. Just because you don't remember it doesn't mean I'm going to sit through the whole spiel again. I'd like to get through this and try to survive Monica. Thank you very much. No offense. Well, uh, considering how little I've spent read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. <laughs> <laughs> the level of creativity and craftsmanship between them is amazing to me. And in telling good stories, such a foreign world is equally impressive. Okay, so a lot of this is just going to repeat and loop through. Yuri goes on to her passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. I 
you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once, and this really grasped for something I can relate to at the minimum level. <laughs> At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Uh huh. I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your person. It suits your personality. Hey. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Eh, I hate horror. Oh. Why is that? Well, I just... Nasty's eyes start over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! Hey, give that back! Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Nasty averse her eyes. You wouldn't like them. I like your poems a lot. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you, or do you have writing experience? Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe you share some of your work. You can set an example and help Maskey feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah. Uh... I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well... I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Nephilim? Uh, hold on. There's still one problem. Your club president is an evil, psychotic, all-powerful bitch who's trying to kill all of you so she can have me all to herself. Eh? What's that? I just said it! Don't act like you didn't hear me! Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All th three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... Eh? The girls exchange glances before Maka turns back to me. I... I guess I need to tell you the truth, Nephilim. The thing is... We don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. Besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls? Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Nephilim? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. 
Nephilim, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? How about give me my best friend back? How about you stop screwing everything over? How about you accept the fact that you're not an option for a romantic interest? Ah, thanks I guess. Okay everyone, I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Maka looks over at me once more. Nephilim, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up beside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. See how this plays out. Yes. A joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized she was in love with him. Before a disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. What? And of course, that leaves. Nerp. Nibble. Lollipop. I'm still going for Natsuki. Candy. Special. Anime. Milk. Lucky. Here. Beauty. Parfait. Sure. There's a lot of... I'm noticing more... Darker ones. Uh, nope. Uh, cute. Kid. Hi again, Nephilim. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Yeah, I want to. Nah, I don't want. Don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but uh, at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thank you for keeping your promise, Nephilim. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Taking you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. No! Do not do that to my Natsuki! Do not do that to my Natsuki! Do not do that to my Natsuki! Oh, come on! Like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. 
But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Beg your pardon, why are you in front? Why are you in front of the text? Oh no, it's slowing down. Okay, what the frick? Who said you could do that? Nazi finds himself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Nazi pops back into her seat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nephilim. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with, with a disappointing glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read? Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, if you don't really, don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So if you don't, if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all. I heard the dip in the music again. You cannot hide that from me. And then I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Mo did Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Eh! I hear Natsuki's he utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? What? First of all, your language! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if somebody else is gonna, just gonna mess it up? Now she slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You, you eat manga, right? Ah, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a long volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga, slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box she's set she's admiring. Parfagos? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you've gotten the judge, you could go do it to the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. Here's the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Nephilim. Consider this a lesson. Don't judge a book. Stop doing this shit to me! In fact, as he pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box, 
I'm gonna show you exactly why. She starts the book right into my hands. Ah! I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful old tires striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. <laughs> As he grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. You can't read at the same time like that. Huh? What's that? Nah, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Don't just say that! Don't make me feel feel weird about it. As he crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I could say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read from the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? The I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of those since it's rare f the, for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Okay. Thank God. Okay, the frickin'. She's fine. Are you, are you kidding? Or so this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince one of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Did you not rip it in? Jeez. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I think I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up, up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? I just want to punch them in the face. Seriously, people, anyone who thinks manga or anime is for kids have not seen... <laughs> have not really seen manga or anime. Like, holy shit, there's some stuff that you... that kids should never see. And I'm not even talking about hentai. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge. Much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. That would beat the sh- I mean, I found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Eh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Eh. So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or right? What? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Time passes. Nasi is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. She fell asleep! It looks like she started to fall asleep. That didn't happen before! Hey, Natsuki! Yeah? Suddenly Natsuki collapses straight in. Hey! Oh, jeez. 
Natsuki, are you okay? Here. Monica reaches to her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. What the fuck? She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light it up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give... Oof. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, Nephilim. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we all share problems now? What the fuck? Natsuki! I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Okay, well, let's start with the things I didn't. I don't like. First of all, um. Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Eee. In fact, I remember how I said I wanted to read your poems. That's what I had in mind when writing this. I wanted to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Eee. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poems if yours wasn't real. If yours was really bad. You're supposed to show me some dumb poem that and make me go, ha, what's up that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you ain't ruined it. I hope you're happy. So in other words, you're saying you liked it. Eek! Now see his rhetoric gets caught in the throat. Eee, you're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the whole... to the world like you're all self-important. I'm pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Eh, fine, I guess. Only because Maka will make me if I don't. Okay, so that one's the same. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it! What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even make my take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helped bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Yeah. Hmm. Here he stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh. Uh, sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? No, I've wrote this exact poem before. Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that might. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. Uh, no! Uh, did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really did notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that 
There are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their styles very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That's going to be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if you're apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't that supposed to be a... Isn't this supposed to be a lecture club? Throw some of the light. Okay, that's all the same. Hi. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Siri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Nepho. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, it seemed to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. You just have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Hi, Nephilim. Having a good time so far? No, you're screwing everything over. Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. Not now, Kirk! Not now. I'm recording. Much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Nephilim. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand knock on my poem. It's been quite a while since there's been a freaky glitch out. Mm hmm. I like it, Nephilim. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It, it kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> 
Maxie's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood pretty often. But sometimes she just loses all of her strength and shuts down. Um, yeah, she's... Her father's abusive. Like earlier, this is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnourish, mal malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls too, you know. Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? I don't think I do! Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glanced at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on a flat sheet of paper? The sound of frantic scra scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe this space before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. This is a continuation of the other one! This is a continuation of the hole in wall. This this is the poem she wrote the first time, but this is a continuation of it. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. They performed out loud. It could be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. Yeah, the epiphany that you can manipulate this entire game and just delete your competition one by one until well, there's only you. So you can have me all to yourself, you psychotic bitch. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Or after everyone else is dead. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Let's find a specific point. Each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know that advice. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. Ugh, what time is it? Okay. It's as if everyone is judging me from my mediocre writing abilities. <sighs> that did not sound right. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. You don't know the bloody half of it. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyes furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. I took this language. Did. Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh. Thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the, the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? We need to try that hard to come up with something nice to say. Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... 
Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Heh. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Nephilim did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate y'all, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Nephilim liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. This music still... I need this... I need this music. This music is still enough to get me smiling. Even with all the shit going on. <laughs> That's not what I... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Nephilim appreciates my advice more than he appreciates it yours. Heh! <laughs> and how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I were full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Eee! Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Nephilim started showing up. Natsuki! Yeah. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as a young, young as you look, Natsuki. Me? I'm scared, Angie. Sorry that my lifestyle is too much of showing of your mental age. Oh sh shit! See that proves my point. Hey, for the missile, you know, if you want to improve anything, stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You can't balance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute. The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Well, be careful, you might cut yourself with that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Did, did you just accuse me of cutting myself? Fuck this man, did you? Yeah, go on. Let Nipple hear it that you really can. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh, Suddenly, Yuri towards me as if he just noticed I was standing up here. Nephilim! She, she's just trying to make you look bad. That's not true. Dear God! Holy shit! She started it. Nephilim, why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for, er, for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Uh -huh. So President, I am right. It, no, I notice how I'm not talking or putting any info into this. You're not even talking to the character. You're talking directly to me. I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. Oh, I think you're being plenty of assertive. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend more time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki walks out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. 
But it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri's rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Nephilim, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm, not, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Don't you fucking do anything to her. Anyway, the meeting's over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like he wanted, wants to say something. But she keeps glancing at Monica. You, you can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so... Please let me take that responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It, it's not that! It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Nephilim. It would just be... Embarrassing with you listening. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble. I have no save. Okay, so this got seriously fucked. Holy shit. This got fucked. This is how it's going to be for the rest of the game. Just one by one, they're going to be picked off until there's no, there's just Monica. Oh dear God. Okay, it took a while for me to get to the crazy but I'm here now so thank you guys so much for watching and as always I will see you in the next episode later